Do you have the courage to listen to your heart? My cheeks hurt from smiling so hard as I climbed those first few steps on a bus heading to a farm. I was starting my journey of truly listening to the messages from my heart. I was stepping away from everything I knew, from life in the city, from family and friends, from my education and schooling. But I knew I was stepping into the next chapter of my life. For the first time, I felt like my life was my own and that I finally had the courage to live it. Getting on that bus was only possible because of something that had been unlocked in me a year before. I stepped into the hallway and my stomach rumbled. I was on my way for an overdue lunch break for my social services class at Dawson College. I flipped open my phone to see a bunch of missed calls. As I tried to make out a distraught voicemail from a friend, a man came rushing around the corner, pale as a ghost, and ordered us to get back in our class. I heard some distant screams and noises that I couldn't quite make sense of, and time seemed to slow down until all at once it registered what was happening. We were in the middle of a school shooting. We all rushed back into our class, turned the lights off, and hid under our desks in the back corner of the room. And there we stayed for the next 45 minutes, listening as the shooter got closer and closer to where we were. I truly believed I was going to die. To all of our enormous relief, a group of police officers stuck into our class and silently escorted us to a position of safety. Once we got outside, I felt the sunshine on my face and the reality started to sink in. I was alive. With this realization, the question became, what is the truest, most important thing for me to do with this life? And do I have the courage to listen to the answer? The truth was, school wasn't right for me anymore. Not because of this horrific event, but there had been a voice deep down inside that I hadn't felt brave enough to listen to. This little voice was telling me that another life path was calling. If I was to be truly alive, this meant turning up the volume on that little voice and turning down the volume on all the doubts, pressures, and expectations. I got clear about what I really felt, connected to the message in my heart, and found the courage to take the next step. I left school and got on that bus to a farm. It had vegetable gardens, maple syrup production, and the real reason I chose it, there were 24 horses. I was completely obsessed with them. And I was also super intimidated, for good reason. Many of the horses at this farm were young, feisty, and for someone like myself who knew nothing about them, they could be quite dangerous. One horse, Contessa, we should really be careful about the names we choose, was particularly pushy and seemed to enjoy challenging all the people and horses around her. One day, I was offered the opportunity to do some training with her. Looking back, it was a terrible idea, but I'm beyond grateful that it happened. It was not smooth sailing, but over time, Contessa and I developed a beautiful relationship. We began to trust each other, not because I was training her, but because she was actually training me. It's like she was strengthening and fine-tuning this muscle inside of me, this muscle that has the ability to turn up the volume on my true self and turn down the volume on all the doubts, pressures, and expectations. She was training me to trust myself, not just in big life moments, but in the seemingly small ones too. To get clear about what I really felt, connected to the message in my heart, 
and courageously step into action. 15 years later, I've now worked with thousands of these amazing four-legged teachers. I've become a coach and facilitator, helping others empower their true selves with the help of horses. We don't have to be directly with horses to start doing this. And all it takes are a few breath cycles. The tool to help us do this is called the three C's, an exercise to strengthen clarity, connection, and courage. First, we breathe to get clear. As we slow our breathing down, we bring our attention to our physical body all the way down to our feet. We're not trying to change anything, just noticing what's happening in this present moment. Second, we breathe to get connected, sending our breath into our heart, perhaps even bringing our hands there. We invite our heart to speak to us. If our heart had one message for us in this moment, what would it be? It might be the tiniest of whispers, so listen closely. Third, we breathe to become courageous, sending our breath into our belly, into our power center. We gather the energy to courageously step into action. If we could take one step in the direction that our heart wants us to go, what would that be? We might do this quickly with three mindful deep breaths, or we might take more time with multiple breath cycles for each part. Either way, this is something we can do that doesn't cost anything, but that can give us everything. Practicing the three C's, clarity, connection, and courage, daily or even multiple times a day, can really shift how we're able to show up for ourselves and in the world around us. <coughs> I'll leave you with this. Our world needs us to be our full selves, to be fully alive, to make space for what our heart is telling us, and have the courage to do something about it.